I have never beaten Minecraft before. Yes, that is a fact. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing absolutely everything. Yes, everything. I can just to beat the game. And I have sat here for a constant 50 hours trying to beat the game. So you better watch until the end of the video. But first, I have to take it all the way back to February of 2022. Because that is the first time I ever did this challenge. So far, nothing's really happened. I've just loaded up this world. Oh! Ah! Yeah. It didn't really go to plan. So, eight months later, in October of that year, I decided to try again. And... Hmm. I didn't really get the best of luck to begin with. Yes, mate. Let's go. And then just died a horrible death through a skeleton. God damn it. Okay. And then after a while, I would just quit out and play Bed Voice for the rest of the stream. Ugh. What was I like back then? I wouldn't really count those as official ones because I did it in easy difficulty. Now, I decided that I'm gonna do it in hardcore. Yeah. HARDCORE! There we go. On the first attempt, uh, I got some wood, like everyone else. Mined a few blocks and got a few upgrades, as you can see. Found a village and looted it, and unfortunately died to an enderman. And I see that as a pretty good first run, to be honest. Now, on this run, um, I got some iron from a buried shipwreck, made a bucket and some protection. Found a village, uh, looted that place. Uh, even found a ruined nether portal with some really good stuff in it. Made it into the nether and died to a bunch of piglins that I accidentally hit. Oh my god! Because I have like so much footage of me trying to beat Minecraft, I can't really like put it all in. So I'm just gonna show you some serious deaths during a lot of these attempts. On this one, um, I got trapped at the edge of lava while a hoglin was chasing me and um, stuck in those vines and I just died from that. On this attempt, I got stuck on a lot of soul sand while there were a lot of blazes around me, and I kept getting shot by them, which, which made me die. What? How did that hit? For this one, a ghast just blew up my nether portal as soon as I got in, and uh, kept shooting me until I was dead. Bit unfair, but okay. And in this one, I was hit by a wither skeleton while a blaze was firing up. And then it hit me again and I died. No! For the next one I'm about to show, it was like the closest I've ever got to beat in the game. I had all 12 ender pearls and then I died to a creeper. Oh my god. With this attempt, I accidentally hit a bunch of piglins again and then jumped off and. I'm dead. I'm dead. No. I'm, so I'm, I'm dead. Oh, I tried it. And for this, uh, I was at such a great height, and um, I was just doomed to fall. Oh my god. I'm dead. And with this last one, it is absolutely crazy, because I got all the blaze powder I needed, and I couldn't believe what I just caused. Oh my god. Get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Half a heart. Fuck! Had to save your ears there. <laughs> there were so many blazes that there was literally no escape. Oh my lord. And after multiple failed attempts, I ran a poll on my channel to see if it is okay with you guys for me to use the seed of my best run. And the responses are allowing me to do that. Like, come on. It's my first time beating the game. I promise I won't do it again, I swear. Now it is time to get on with the rolls. Now, in order for me to beat the game, I have to be as legitimate as I can. If I die, then I have to restart. I cannot modify the game in any sort of way. The only things I'm allowed are resource packs, and that is it. No typing, chords, not even a single letter, nothing in the chat. The only thing that I am allowing myself to do is to take a screenshot of the nether portal in the nether. That's it. If I take a second screenshot, I have to fail the run. And if I try to cheat in any sort of way, then the run will again restart. Now that I got my rules set, it is time for the moment you guys have been waiting for. The way I'm going to show this is that I'm going to be commentating over it while it's happening. So yeah, this will be interesting. So let's get into it. So starting off, I started to get some gravel, and um, it took me a while for me to actually get a single piece of flint to make a flint and steel, and then I got to punching a tree, as usual. I'll then start mining for some stone to make a furnace, and a couple of stone tools. Get a bit of coal. I then came across a ravine that had a bit of iron in it, and then I started preparing for where, for where I'm going to move next. And then these ocean monuments were on land, somehow. But, um, yeah. Because I played in this world before I 
I already knew where all the chests were. Now going over to the shipwreck, it, it is very interesting because it is half oak, half acacia. And it had some pretty good loot in it and it had another buried treasure. I'm only going to go to one of them because uh, the other one was just like underwater and I didn't really... And I just couldn't really be bothered to get that one anyway. But yeah, um, that really doubled the amount of iron I already had. And um, yeah, pretty good. And continuing on, it got dark pretty quick. So I made a bed and slept the night. And getting on into the next day, uh, I got some more wood because I was kind of running out. And after a bit more traveling, I stumbled upon a ruined parcel. So then I looted that place, got a Fortune 1 pickaxe, and mined the gold block that was on top. I would then create a bit more armor to add on to the leather items that I got from the shipwreck, and went on my way to find a village. From here, I would gather all the hay bales that were there and turn it into bread, and then kill the iron golem for, uh, for a bit more iron in case I run out. And then looted the only chest that was there. And the rest of the village just kinda had nothing there, so I set off again for a lava pool and started making my nether portal. I then saved up space in my inventory to prepare for the nether and lit up the portal to see what was waiting on the other side. So, entering the nether, I took a screenshot of my nether portal and then I was on my way to find another fortress. It was a bit complicated to navigate, but I was totally fine with it. Whee! Coming across my first lava pole, I I had I, I had to bridge across. I would then quickly discover the another fortress and uh, there was a little chest in there so I had a little peek and um had a sword and a couple of other things. Another flint and steel. And yeah, I continued my journey to find the blaze spawner. Now, when it comes to exploring a fortress, um, I'm always too scared to actually just run down straight through the corridors because of like the wither skeletons and all that. And my sudden realization on how strong they were. So I decided to dig into the wall. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a bit stupid. To get to the blaze spawner. That I just found. And it was backed up against the wall so I could initiate the strategy that I came up with myself. Now the strategy that I came up with, uh, it involves going underneath the blaze spawner. And the way to do that is, first of all, you got to have a brief look at the entire area itself. So you know on how many blocks you have to dig to get right underneath that spawner. And once you do, then... um. Use the nether bricks to craft a couple of slabs to put all the way around the spawner. For the main ground itself will be two blocks deep and and straight through the middle of it will be three blocks deep. So the blazes will come to you and you will get those extra crits. That is like my best method of getting blaze rods. I don't know if there are methods even better that does not use redstone, but yeah. It's a strategy, it's a strategy that, that I came up with and it seemed to work, which was amazing. And by the way, and I call that strategy The Undertaker because you're killing those blazes from underneath. And as you can see, I am now locked into the position to beat those blazes. And they cannot get me, 70% of the time. For this one, I'm going to collect 7 rods in case one of the ender eyes break. Then um, I, I need a backup at least. So, collecting the first one is pretty easy. It only charged once. Eat up. And the second one is a bit complicated because it took a few tries. It was then followed by a third one shortly after. Oh no, I got hit. <laughs> I'm fine, I got plenty of food. After I stopped burning, the process of me getting blaze rods went pretty quick. I got four, and then after I killed another one, I got five. And then killing another one, I got six. So, and of course I could just walk, I could have just walked out with those six rods, but... No. My odds of getting a seventh blaze rod, um, just kind of went back to normal level. So, um, yeah, I took a bit for me to get a seventh one. So then I turned that blaze rod into That's powder great. and I was out of there. So long, blazes. You never catch me alive. Oh my god, I'm such a bandit. After doing a bit of mining, uh, I, event I eventually found myself back at the warped forest of Oris. 
spawned in. So from there I got my boat out from earlier and started killing some endermen. Which is another crucial part about beating Minecraft. You need ender pills. Because without them you won't be able to craft eyes of ender. Which of course you will need to fill in the end portal to get to the end. And that's a true statement. Getting the first ender pearl was quite easy. And then followed by the second one. And then third. But this one, the underpearl did drop, but it just vanished out of existence. I, I, I still, I still don't know how that happened even now that I'm looking back at it. What? Anyhow, that is not going to stop me from beating the game. Anyway, back on track. I got the fourth one. And then the quantity of endermen just kind of went down, so I had to go into a different part of the warped forest to find more. After finding another enderman on top of the tree and successfully killing that one, that, that took me up to five enderpearls. And due to my notice of the lack of endermen that prolonged my time of getting all the pearls and my hunger was going down. I'm even going to show you guys one of them where I didn't get a pearl. It took me a couple of extra minutes to, re to even just find a single enderman in the entire warped forest. Oh my goodness. After finally finding another enderman, because I was another successful kill, I am now up to 7 pearls. And then I scanned the whole area again, just to get my 8th ender pearl. And I would say it took just as long, compared to getting my 7th. And then it got even harder to progress further, due to some bad luck when killing endermen for ender pearls. And then this enderman, instead of getting in the boat, decided to stand on top of it, which is kind of annoying. Ugh. Game mechanics. I would then just go on to find another enderman that would actually sit inside of the boat so I could kill it. Which now put me up to nine pearls, yay! And finally, at long last, I found a group of endermen. And, um, two of them actually got in the boat. So, I guess that doubles my luck. And here's another one where I didn't get another enderpearl from this enderman. Come on. I'm supposed to be a bandit rubbing your corpse. I will then get double the luck because both of these endermen went in the boat one by one and suffocated. Which brought me up to 11 pearls. A piglin then came super close to my boat. So in order to prevent it from actually sitting inside the boat, I distracted it with the use of some, some of the gold that I had. So then I could continue on and get the 12th. And a pearl. I would then decide to get 13 pearls instead, one less than I originally intended, just to challenge myself. So I could quickly turn all of that into Eyes of Ender, and it's time to go back into the overworld. With an enderman at night. So I placed down my bed again, and had another sleep. So as the next day dawned, um, I returned to the village to make some extra preparations in case they had like another iron golem. I also decided to get a bit of extra food in case I run out by killing some cows because I'm a cowboy. After that, I grabbed a bit of extra stone and a few extra blocks so I could tower up to the pillars and also freed that enderman that was stuck in the portal and then sorted out my inventory so I could quickly switch between weapons if they break while fighting the dragon. And then I decided to craft myself an iron axe and a pickaxe because the one I already had I've used a lot. And then I started cooking all the beef collected from the cows and burn the leather because I don't need it. That's not so yeehaw of me to actually burn leather, but at least I'm still wearing the cowboy chaps that I got from the shipwreck. I then cut down a few extra trees for some more blocks and then made another furnace to speed up the process of the cooking. And once that was done, I put water all over the entire lava pool area and mined the stone around it. It got dark again, so I had another sleep. And then I dropped off all the items that I didn't need at the village, like the furnaces, the crafting table, pretty much anything that was no longer important. You can also see that I collected a bunch of beds, so if I wanted to do some like critical damage to the dragon, then I could. I then collected a few extra beds, in case I actually wanted to kill the dragon with just beds. And now it is time to set off and use the eyes of Ender to get to the stronghold. Despite technically already knowing where the stronghold is, I still threw an eye of Ender anyway because it was really cool. Now when I dug down to it, the first part I entered was the a 
was at the top of a series of stairs. So, I gotta say, that's a pretty good entry. <laughs> Somehow, on this run, I actually got lost in the entire complex. Literally, how can that happen? Like, I've been in the stronghold before. And I get lost in it. I would eventually find myself back on track and found the portal room very quick. I broke the spawner by placing down some water so the silverfish couldn't get me. Killed some of them. Blocked the entryway to prevent any mobs from coming in. And then started pondering on how I'm going to kill the dragon. After having a think about it, I made sure that everything in my inventory was exact. And then made the move by filling in the end portal. It is now time for the final part of the game. And I jump in. Upon entering the end, I went straight to the middle island. And um, it took a bit for the inner dragon to, to, to appear. Just run around a bit to see where it was. And once it did, um, I waited for it to camp down at the middle. To see if I could get some early crits. But. Unfortunately not. As it just. For some reason. This is like the weirdest. Sort of behavior I've ever seen. From the dragon. Where it, it just kept following me. And then eventually it went down. So I went in. And unfortunately. Um, as, when I, as soon as I jumped. Uh, I got the dragon launched me. A couple of blocks. So instead of that I decided to tower up. I didn't quite work out either. The dragon just hit me off. Ow! Even kept trying to fireball me as well. I just kept a considerable distance from the from the main center, hoping that it would actually go back down again. And it just wouldn't. It would. I just wouldn't even go down. And it just stayed within sight. And as soon as it pushed down again, I went in to see if I could get some early crit. What? Yeah. I died. And after all these 50 hours, I was so fed up at that point that I just don't feel like carrying on anymore. It just really shocked me that I get this far and I still can't beat the game. It, it has just destroyed me because I lost a lot of sleep over this and it's deteriorated my health. Even now, I feel tired because of all of this. So I have officially decided I'm not gonna carry on with this or otherwise those problems are gonna affect me even worse. At least I have tried my best at beating this game, but unfortunately, I'm not able to do it. And if I really want to do this, then um, I would have to take a lot of time out of my day. But I can't really do that because there are a lot of other things I have to do as well. So yeah, I'm so sorry that I'm having to tell you guys that. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. For the ones who have watched all the way through, thank you. Thank you so much for showing support. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.